Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, what we'll see is uh, we'll see how to solve uh, difference equations using Z transformation. Okay. So as you can see in the slides that I have posted over here, um, I have a working procedure to solve a linear differential equa difference equation with constant coefficient by Z transformation. You already know what is Z transformation is. Um, you already know what is uh, difference equation is. So it should not be a difficult topic to cover it in a quick moment. So the first step is to just take the Z transform of both of the sides of the difference equations, then transpose them in uh, with the U of Z to the right, and then divide by the uh, coefficient of U of Z and uh, get the U of Z as the function of Z, then take the uh, inverse Z transform of it, and hence you get the uh, answer for the difference equation. It's exactly same as that of what you have done in your Laplace trans. Uh, it's exactly same as that of what you have done in your um, solving differential equation using Laplace transformation. So it should not be a difficult job to do it right now. So let's get to it. Uh, first of all, we'll solve this problem, whatever I have mentioned over here. Solve um, the difference equation un plus 2 plus 4 un plus 1 plus 3 times un equal to 3 to the power n with u naught equal to 0 and u1 e equal to 1. Okay, fine. How do we solve this? Of course, if you don't understand what I have mentioned in these steps over here, if you concentrate right right now, then that's okay. It's not going to be a difficult job to follow it. Uh, what is the thing? Uh, first steps, let's write the solution. Uh, where is it? And, uh, yeah. Um, solution. First things first, let's take the Z transformation of uh, for this equation on both sides which means we take this transformation of un plus 2 plus 4 times un plus 1 plus 3 times un which is will be equal to the transform of 3 to the power n just simple algebraic expression uh, let's take care of this in a moment but we'll first concentrate on only on uh, difference equations first things first you know that z transformation is linear so i can write this as the transformation of un plus 2 plus 4 times z transformation of un plus 1 plus 3 times z transformation of un and that would be equal to z transformation of 3 to the power n uh, probably right away i can write what is the transformation of 3 to the power n you know this formulas that you need it for this problem i'll write it here what is the transformation of a to the power n so simply z divided by z minus a so here you see this instead of a to the power n it's 3 to the power n therefore this would be z divided by z minus 3 that's it now what is z transformation of u n plus 2 you also know this using shifting uh, rules or shifting theorems then however you have learned it is simple that what is z transformation of u n plus 1 is actually z uh, times z times u of z minus u naught right and z transform of u n plus 2 is z square times u of z minus u naught minus u1 z to the power minus 1. Of course, you can continue this until you are whatever you are with. So here u n plus k suppose in general. Then this is, remember you had 2 is 2 here. So z to the power k times u of z minus, it starts from u naught. It goes until 1 lesser than the k value. So if we can think of this as k value then it goes until 1 lesser than the k value, which means u1 z to the power minus 1 minus and so on minus finally uk minus 1 z to the power minus of k minus 1, okay? Or in other words, minus k plus 1, whatever it is. Now, that's the formulas which is required for this particular problem. Now, uh, while starting it, we also can assume, so let's let u of z equal to z of un or in other words, the other way around, that's okay. Uh, therefore, what we can do right now here is, now whatever I have written here is u of z is simply z of u n. So that's why I had to define it in advance. And what is z of u n plus 2? Which is just by definition over here, this is z square times u of z minus u naught minus u1 z to the power minus 1 plus 4 times z of u n plus 1. So just now I mentioned u n plus 1 is z times u of z minus u naught then plus 3 times z of u n remember i just assume z of u n is u of z so i can write away write u of z equal to z by z minus assuming it's just for our convenience so you don't have to really do it um 
Yeah. Now we already know what is the value of u naught. It's been given in the question. U naught equal to zero. You also know what is the value of u one. So u one equal to one. So we can substitute all of them. So therefore, this will become z square times u of z minus u naught, which is zero, right? Am I right? Yeah. U naught is zero. Then u one is one. So this would become one into z to the power minus one plus four into z times u of z. Minus u naught, which is zero. So I can write away write four into simply u of z plus three times u of z is equal to z divided by z minus three. Now all that you have to do is just collect the terms which are having only u of z, and then collect the remaining terms, and then push it to the right hand side as we did in the Laplace transformation. So what we do here is let's collect these things. Remember this one has coefficient z square, and this has a coefficient four z. Plus four z, and this has this three. So z square plus four z plus three times u of z, and the remaining is z square times z to the power minus one, which is minus simply z, and nothing else. So that's equal to z divided by z minus three. Okay. Now z square plus four z plus three times u of z equal to Now I can push this to right hand side, which will give you z plus z plus z minus three. Okay, fine. What else we can do? Uh, since I already have uh, um, z on top, what is my plan? My plan is simply push this u of uh, push this term to this side. So it's just going to give us z divided by z square plus four z plus three plus z divided by z square plus four z. Plus three times z minus three. Now all that I wanted was I want to split this into partial fraction or use convolution theorem, any other technique to find the inverse z transform of it, right? Because all that we wanted was z value, and that z value can be found out using inverse z transformation. Okay. So how do we do that? Of course, you have to split this into two terms right now. First, um, now here you see that three is there. So if I multiply by one and three, I get three, and some of this is going to be four. And that being said, the factor for this particular polynomial is simply z plus one into z plus three, right? And plus whatever the way you wanted to factorize, you can do it. Right? It's it's not compulsory. I'm just doing it just by using the small technique of sum of roots should be equal to the uh, negative of the coefficient, uh, and the product of roots should be equal to the constant term, so that Z minus of the each term will become the um, uh, factors. So if I exactly write in the same fashion, so minus one and minus three are the roots of the equation. In other words, Z plus one and Z minus Z plus three are the factors. Okay, fine. Now this one is Z plus one into Z plus three, and of course I also have Z minus three. Okay, fine. Now it's our term to split into either partial fraction for each of these terms or um combining them as well so anything you want you can do it uh, now one small trick that i can do is here is since i already have z on top uh, let's do this uh, let's take care of this z later meaning uh, let's take this u of z divided by z this side and meaning you can take this z outside and then bring it to this side and hence what you will have is you will have only this terms 1 by z plus 1 times z plus 3 plus 1 divided by z plus 1 into Z plus three into Z minus three. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm thinking one more thing that I can make this a single fraction so that I can work on only one fraction. Uh, with that being said, this is Z plus one, Z plus three, and what is missing is Z minus three. It's okay. So multiplying and dividing by Z minus three, I get this. Okay. Oh, that makes the things a little complicated, isn't it? Because this will give me uh, one more z on top, and that will make the partial fraction to be getting complicated. So what we will do is we'll not do that. We'll do that individual partial fractions as it is. Okay. So now let's find out the partial fraction for this. Let's find out the partial fraction for this individually, and then put them together. Okay. <laughs> So I'll do for one, and then you will do for the rest of them, I guess. So let's take this uh, one divided by 
z plus 1 times z plus 3 and this can be written as a divided by z plus 1 plus b divided by z plus 3 right in terms of partial fraction and that being that is that means you can write 1 equal to you can push this to right side and that will give you a into see if you push this to right side what will happen z plus 1 and z plus 1 will get cancelled here in the first term therefore z plus 3 plus b into now z plus 3 and 2 z plus 3 will get cancelled and gets b into z plus 1. Now you know this is a polynomial linear polynomial which is satisfied for all the z values all possible z values which means you can substitute the z value appropriately and find out the constants a and b whatever you want. So here let's take the z values minus 3 for uh, for for neglecting or for omitting this and to find out this b value so this is a small trick so if you put z equal to minus 3 you will get minus 3 plus 3 which will be 0 right so therefore 1 equal to so the first term becomes 0 but the second term will become 3 minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 and that is meaning that means b is equal to minus 1 by 2 okay so similarly if you let z equal to minus 1 you get 1 equal to remember if you say z equal to minus 1 this term vanishes uh, meaning this complete term vanishes therefore it will give you a into minus 1 uh, plus 3 which is 2 so a will be equal to 1 2, 1 by 2 so the b value is actually minus 1 by 2 and b a value is plus 1 by 2 so here um, therefore what we can do is therefore what we can do is we can write this 1 divided by z plus 1 into z plus 3 as uh, 1 divided by 2 into z plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 into z plus 3 okay that means we can now plug into this place and then solve the problem okay now what we will do is we'll also do the partial fraction for the other term as well and hence you will get similar fractions here and then you can put them into together so probably you can take one or two minutes to find out the partial fraction for this term you see this will give you a divided by z plus 1 plus b divided by z plus 3 plus c divided by z minus 3 and do as it is what i did here and hence you will get the uh, answer and that being said i will write the final partial fractions combining these two together so that i will not waste time in, in solving it for you Okay, so what is the answer here? It's actually is 3 by 8. 3 by 8. Remember, you have to do some computations like this. So 3 by 8 is 1 by z plus 1. 1 by z plus 1. And then uh, plus 1 by 24. Plus 1 by 24 times 1 by z plus 3 I guess yeah minus 3 mm -hmm. then plus uh, sorry not plus minus 5 by 12 1 divided by z plus 3 Remember, this terms came just after putting the partial fraction of this and then computation of some summations of corresponding terms. So this is my u of z divided by z. Okay. Now all that I have to do is just push this z to the right hand side. Therefore, you will get u of z equal to 3 by 8 times z by z plus 1 plus 1 by 24 times z by z minus 3 minus 5 by 12 times z by z plus 3. Okay fine so this is the trick now what we will do now let's take the inverse laplace transform of this so taking inverse laplace uh, not laplace uh, um, inverse <laughs> z transform we get z inverse of u of z remember which was my un so that's my solution that i wanted and that will be equal to 3 by 8 times z inverse of z by z plus 1 plus 1 by 24 times z inverse of z by z minus 3 
remember i use the linearity property of inverse the transformation as well so minus 5 by 12 times um z inverse of z by z plus 3 and that power this implies what is the value so this implies the u n equal to 3 by 8 times what is the inverse z transform of uh, z by z plus 1 which is minus 1 whole to the power n so remember i just have written the formula here you see here um a to the power n uh, z transformation is z by z minus a which means from here if you find the inverse z transform of z by z minus a and that means a to the power n so here what i have is z by z minus uh, z by z plus 1 which means z minus the way you think of this is z minus of minus 1 so this would become minus 1 whole to the power n with the same result plus 1 by 24 times this is 3 to the power n plus uh, not plus minus 5 by 12 times minus 3 whole to the power n right same same thing as that of z plus 1 but here it's just 3 that's all and that's it that's the answer you see finding the corresponding u1 is the question mark and that question mark has been already answered here see solving difference equation is simply finding the corresponding sequence which satisfies the difference equation right isn't it yeah okay so so far what we have done in this uh, particular uh, lecture it just simply we have solved one problem which is uh, uh, to find the u n value using z transform for the difference equation given or in other words we solved a difference equation using z transform so what did we do for this simply we took the z trans uh, we took the difference equation and then take the z transform on both sides and we used some of the formulas that we have learned while we have um, studying z transformation then finally what we did is we have made the inverse z transform of the u of z that we have derived it or calculated it and hence that was giving me un okay fine now this advantage of solving using z transform is very simple you see everything whatever we have done here is after we found the z transformation everything was simply addition and subtraction which means just simply algebraic computation only so there is no integration involved or differentiation involved or any other computation is involved only the thing which is involved was addition and subtraction and the partial fractions which were simply algebraic methods all right okay. anyway so we'll solve uh, some more problems in these consecutive videos so right now at this moment i'll stop this video at this place you can revise it back and then uh, come back to the next video and until then thank you so much see you bye